So shortness of breath is a very not specific generic symptoms or complaining. So could be related to several reasons. So what in general and um, becomes um, a reason of alarm when the shortness of breath is something new that the, the, the patients, the person never experienced before or is something that he never had before and is something really affecting or changing his daily life. So when we talk to the patient, because it's been referred to our service and because for the shortness of breath, so there is a, some concern of heart disease, the, the, the first thing is trying to understand from, from what they, is, they how they, um, uh, they, they notice this shortness of breath. Um, so, and from when? So is it something you have from several years or is something that you noticed uh, very recently in the last six, 12 months, let's say, or even shorter time? Second point, how changes your life? Is that shortness of breath you get all the time you climb one flight of stairs or you do what you always used to do uh, if you was used to the, 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 was used to, to go for, I mean, for a walk or walking the dog or doing gardening or playing sport or even having a shower and notice that now has to stop for the shortness of breath. That could be another uh, serious point. Another point is also trying to understand if there was an history of lung disease like asthma or there is a history of uh, smoking. And then the shortness of breath is something long standing. Uh, if they also, and there are also history, uh, there is an history of chest infections, frequent chest infections. And then we have to consider overall uh, the risk of having some serious diseases can, can, could be related to the shortness of breath. So in general, cardiovascular risk factors, if the patient um, has history of high blood pressure, of high cholesterol, diabetes, family history for a, a heart disease or stroke, and, um, and again, obesity, uh, smoking history. Uh, then another thing is trying to understand if there are other symptoms or signs could, that could be, can explain the shortness of breath. For example, swelling of the legs, increase of the weight, uh, signs of fluid overload. I said, I mentioned the swelling of the legs, but sometimes could be swelling of other parts of the body, especially the lower parts of the body's legs, um, um, back. Uh, or other signs could be of connected tissue disease. There are uh, a disease that affects the joint, can affect the skin. Uh, so we try to figure out what kind of symptoms that, and then from there remove. And we 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 uh, with a physical examination of the patient, trying to understand if the patient needs further investigations. Pulmonary hypertension is in, in general uh, a condition that is, itself is not rare. I mean, pulmonary hypertension means that there is an increase of the uh, pressures on the right side of the heart. So uh, for the people that are not familiar, our heart is made of four chambers. So it works as a pump, but is a pump that pump bloods in two circulations. One is the right side, is the pulmonary circulation. So the circulation brings blood to the heart, to the lungs. And the other side, the left side, pumps blood to the rest of the body. So what he does basically, uh, um, that pumps oxygenated blood for all the body, for the brain, for all the organs, muscles, everywhere. But first, the, the blood needs to be oxygenated and the oxygenation, so it, it, it becomes full of oxygen that is important to, to, for the other organs to work in the lungs. So in the lungs, the circulation is a low resistance circulation, means that the pressure is low, normally low. Sometimes the pressure could be high. And so the high, in, the increase of the pressures on the right side of the pulmonary circulation is called pulmonary hypertension. And this could be one of the 
the reasons for shortness of breath. So this is the reason why usually the patient that have been referred to our service, that is a, a national service for pulmonary hypertension, uh, the reason is shortness of breath most of the time. So uh, the condition of this increase of the pulmonary pressure could be frequent, but there are diseases, they are very rare, uh, one is called pulmonary arterial hypertension or related to previous clot. And there are quite more frequent conditions related to the problem on the left side of the heart that also affect the right side. So this is our job, to try to understand if the shortness of breath needs to be more investigated and if there is an issue uh, of pulmonary hypertension. What is pulmonary hypertension? As I said before, it is the increase of the pressures on the right side. We know that uh, in nearly most of the time, nearly 70% of the time, the problem is also is on the left side. So the left heart becomes or becomes stiffer or is not working well. Uh, so the left ventricle, what is called one of the big chambers, the big chamber that um, pumps blood to all, all the body. Uh, is, uh, is not working well, it becomes bigger or becomes stiffer, and this could be related to a problem of ischemic heart disease uh, due to um, the, the flow to the, to the heart is not enough, and uh, myocardial infarction, for example, angina, uh, could be related to high blood pressure, so the, the heart becomes stiffer, again, diabetes, could be related to arrhythmias, like atrial fibrillation, could be related to um, valve disease for in affecting the mitral valve or the aortic valve. So valves on the left side. This is most of the time. There are other conditions, uh, could uh, pulmonary hypertension related to lung diseases like COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, emphysema, or other interstitial lung fibrosis, all diseases affecting the what is called lung parenchyma, so not much the vessels of the, the lungs, the lungs themselves, the structure of the lungs, that with time can affect also the vessels. And these are, the, I would say, the second common cause of pulmonary hypertension. Then we have rare conditions, and that are pulmonary arterial hypertension, and there is a very rare disease that needs a specific um, uh, investment investigations and, and, and then treatment. And that could be related to several reasons like uh, connected to two diseases um, or congenital disease. So heart disease that people have from, from birth and uh, that been treated or not treated uh, could be related to viral diseases or sometimes are so-called idiopathic. We don't know the reason. Could be familiar too with the other family members affected. And then we have another rare condition but um, uh, need to be um, diagnosed properly because it can have a very effective treatment that is called chronic thromboembolic disease or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. When uh, the patient had a previous clot in the lungs, what is called pulmonary embolism, but 20, 30% of the time, patient had, had never had the clots, clear clot, history of clots. But when we do the investigation, we discover he had the clots. And why is it important to uh, diagnose this condition? Because this is the only one that can be treated very, um, very efficaciously with, with surgery. Because the surgeon can clean this scar inside the vessels of the, the vessels of the lungs and the, and can, this is the only one that can be completely treated. So the patient can go back to normal, recovering, fully recovering. So this is the reason why. And then with, there are other rare conditions. Uh, the shortness of breath could, could be one of the symptoms of heart failure, not itself giving heart failure unless the shortness of breath has um, has a, a symptom of a problem of the right side of the heart. And so at that point, the patient can have, or unfortunately uh, with time has signs of 
right heart failure. So when the right heart can cope, is not able to cope with the request. So um, the patients start to have a swelling of the legs, more shortness of breath, increase of weight, and the kidney, the liver start not working anymore and they need more and more diuretic therapy, water tablet to keep this water retention low. And, and sometimes and the patient is also um, uh, has the characteristic to be considered for transplant, lung transplant even is an option in this, this kind of condition. Yeah, so the shortness of breath could be a um, sign of a lot of conditions. Um, one that needs to be addressed very quickly uh, for example, if a patient has short, uh, significant shortness of breath started recently, one of the reasons could be a clot in the lungs. So it's important to go to the, to the hospital and eventually they will do some blood tests and also a, a CT scan mainly to see if there is a clot in the, in the lungs that needs to be treated uh, with anticoagulant therapy and occasionally with even more aggressive therapies. Um, a shortness of breath could be related to lung diseases. Again, especially if a patient is a smoker, obese, um, then it's important to understand if there is an underlying lung disease that needs to be treated. And a shortness of breath could be a sign of ischemic heart disease, so a problem of um, flow of blood flow to the heart. And so, um, again, we have to investigate uh, these with the proper investigations and treat eventually. Uh, shortness of breath could be uh, a, um, a sign of angina uh, or an equivalent of angina, especially in people with diabetes, where the chest pain is less frequent. They have less pain, but they can just complain shortness of breath. If they have a worsening shortness of breath with other condition that increases the risk of the coronary artery disease, um, hypertension, diabetic, cholesterol, they, this needs to be addressed and investigated.